Uh, that's one of the things you, talk, <clears throat> you touched on that we want to center is the like anti-Asian violence that's happening um, and all of the complications with that. Um, one of the things that you talked about is needing to feel prepared um, if, and when you need to exit the house and go into the community. Um, yeah, I mean, I, this is the sort of the mixed life if you will, is I don't think I totally have personal fear or any more than usual um, because I don't often get coded immediately as an Asian person. Um, Mm -hmm. They have to take that out for them to feel confident that I am Asian because usually the reaction is, what kind of brown are you? Like, um, (laughs) it helps actually a lot. I've been wrestling with that. Like, I don't want to shave it because my face is like fat and you'll see like a double chin under there. It's it's not pretty. You do like a Um, full (laughs) <laughs> um, <is> there, <laughs> the well, maybe I don't know. No, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I so again, I don't. <laughs> um, I don't feel any elevated fear. My partner identifies as black, and there's always some tension for me. So I'm actually used to the idea of like looking around. Um, Mm -hmm. to be prepared just in case something happens. And now I do that for obviously visibly East Asian folks that I run into at Whole Foods and stuff like that, is I try to stay vigilant, vigilant. I try to stay vigilant for them. Um, And I know they don't know that I'm doing that and I try to do it as uncreepily as possible. Mm -hmm. But part of utilizing my privilege, I think, is to find and think about protective ways to like, look out for each other you know yeah. um i always imagine that i might do it in an educational way but like you know the situation we have to do or call call for whatever like reaction is warranted right so 